Hello love, Cassie here. So this week on the blog, I'm diving into how to understand the health of your chakras. So as with many things when we're talking about energy, there are a lot of different ways to do this. So I'm gonna break down two ways here in this video to understand and work with the health of your chakras. If you wanna dive deeper, of course, hop on over to the blog at zendout.com backslash blog for a full breakdown with loads of links and resources um, over there. You can also find it linked in our bio. Okay, before I get much farther, I also wanna just address the shirt because it's amazing. Um, so I got this shirt from Marie Litsu. Um, she is on Instagram, she's linked below, and you can find this shirt on her page. So hop on over to her link that I, or her um, page that I tagged below if you do wanna grab one of these shirts. Okay, so understanding the health of your chakras. So first, why is this important? Why would you wanna do this? I say this all the time, as above, so below, as within, so without. So whatever's going on in your energy body is eventually gonna manifest in physical form as well. So, um, and vice versa. So it's all connected. Our subtle body, our energy body is connected to our physical body. Um, they, they affect one another. So understanding the health of your chakras is going to help you on multiple levels. It's gonna help you, um, it's gonna help your physical health. It's going to help your emotional health. It's, health. it's going to affect your spiritual health. And it's just going to kind of give you a clue as to what areas you might need to focus your energy moving forward. Okay, so those are a few reasons why, again, I dive deeper into that on the blog. Um, so let's get into some ways to understand the health of your chakras. Um, so for me, I think the best starting point is understanding the polarities of each chakra. So just like zodiac signs, each chakra has kind of an optimal functioning place, an overactive functioning place, and an underactive functioning place. So there's a whole range. There's, you know, there are polar polarities of the ways that each chakra can manifest. Um, so understanding all of those different variations in between and the, to and the two ends of the spectrum for each of the chakras is going to be really important because when you understand that, you're going to be able to kind of understand why maybe you're feeling a certain way or you're acting a certain way um, or why things aren't working out in a certain way for you. It's going to start to make a little bit more sense. So I'll share an example with you um, of something that happened to me. So this happened a few years ago. I actually had a chakra reading and this just, it was something that wasn't on my radar. And the, um, the woman that was working with me said, your heart is so, so open. Um, and I think I would have normally taken that as like, oh yes, I know, I'm so loving and giving. And she was just like, no, you need to rein it in. So my heart chakra was very open and overactive. And when I had her explain it to, explain it to me in that way, it made total sense because I knew that I was, I was letting everything in. I was letting everything affect me. I was taking on people's stuff. So an overactive chakra is not any better than a super underactive or blocked stagnant chakra. So that's what I mean about the polarities. So now, and that was a big awakening for me because I understood that, yeah, like overactive isn't any better and I need to be aware of, you know, protecting my energy a little bit better, which I knew that, but not in so much in regards to my chakras. So um, understanding both sides of that. Another example might be um, if you're feeling, and I'm sure several of you have felt this before, you're feeling really anxious, you can't focus, um, you just feel really flighty and all over the place. So a lot of those are signs that you're not grounded and that your root chakra is not, um, is not open, it's blocked. You need that root earth connection. So for me, I know anytime that I'm feeling that way, just a quick walk outside, taking a few moments to go inside and focus on my root chakra, it's going to help open and balance that energetic space for me so that I am feeling a little bit more grounded, safe, protected, and connected to the earth, okay? So those are some reasons why understanding the polarities of the chakras are gonna be really, really beneficial um, for working with and understanding the health of your chakras, okay? Um, so of course, there are loads of ways to really dive into this. If chakras are new to you, you can find um, a breakdown of each chakra on our blog. Um, you can just search in the search bar, anyone that you're looking for, of course, 
any of my books, the Goddess Discovery book one or um, the ritual deck, they have information about the chakras and of course my new book. And I've also linked a couple of my favorite um, books, which I was going to grab, but I forgot to grab them, but they're linked in the blog. So if you really want to do a deep dive into the chakras, the two books that I really recommend, one is um, Wheels of Life by um, Anadea, um, Anadea Judith, and then I might have missed... I may have mispronounced her first name, but I'm going to put it all below, and it's also linked in the blog. And then um, Cindy Dale also has some great work. She has a really good book by um, that's called The Complete Guide to Chakras, I believe. And it is huge. It is a gigantic book. But I really, really like Cindy Dale's work on the chakras because she approaches it from an understanding of chakras from all over the world. Because though the word chakra, it does come from um, Hinduism, it is, these wheels of energy can be found in all cultures all over the world. And Cindy Dale does a great job of really diving into um, these energy points um, that are found and referenced all over the world. So I really recommend that if you want to dive into looking and exploring the chakras from different cultures in different um, areas. There is a lot of overlap, but it's really interesting. So those are my two recommendations for deep dives into the chakras. Okay, so the next technique I want to share with you about understanding the health of your chakras and working with chakra energy is pendulum. So a pendulum is such an amazing spiritual tool. It's very versatile. You can use it for so many different things. Um, if pendulums are brand new to you, I do have a blog post all about pendulums on the blog. Just type in pendulums in the search bar and it'll pop up. It's also linked in this blog post. Um, so pendulums can be super fancy, super basic. I have a couple of them that I use for different purposes. Um, you can even make your own. I think I might have, this is this is my work pendulum that I kind of have here in the office, and then I have another super special one at home that I only use for sp very specific things. Um, but um, you can find you can find them all over. You can make your own. Um, there are instructions online for making your own at home, so it doesn't have to be anything fancy. So one of my favorite ways to use a pendulum is for ascertaining the health of my chakras or somebody else's. So this works really well for readings. Um, now I will say, like I said, if, if a pendulum is brand new to you, um, I suggest spending a little bit of time working with your pendulum first so that you can understand how it's communicating with you and you can kind of form a good relationship with it before you dive into doing a chakra reading, okay? Um, and again, I explained that all in that blog post that I mentioned that I shared a few years ago about pendulums. So if you want to do a chakra reading with a pendulum, um, if you're working on somebody in person, you can just hold the pendulum over their chakras. Now, a lot of times, especially now with COVID, that might not be um, a possibility. So if you're doing remote reading for somebody or if you want to um, check your own chakras, you're going to need... Um, you're going to need something that has the chakras. So in the Goddess Discovery Book Volume 1, there's a drawing in here with all the chakras. You could use that. So I know a lot of you already have this book. You can use this um, with a pendulum, and I'm going to explain how to do this. And then also in my new book, um, there's a bit of information here, quite a bit, about using a pendulum with your chakras. And it also contains this drawing here so you can use it with your pendulum. Now, that said, you don't need either of these fancy things if you want to do a chakra reading with a pendulum. I've done this before in a pinch. All I do is just get a piece of paper and write the seven chakras on the paper, okay? You can just start from, um, from root to crown and write them down. You don't have to have the symbol for them drawn or anything fancy like that. Your pendulum is going to know what you mean, okay? So again, doesn't have to be anything fancy. So when you're getting ready to use your pendulum, as always, anytime you're going to do any kind of spiritual work, take a moment to ground yourself, center yourself, tap into the moment, the present moment. Um, and then when you're ready, you're simply just going to ask your pendulum, and it's always good to make sure you wouldn't want to do this in the position that I am. You would want to make sure you've got this on a table, that you're very firm and steady on a table and can rest your elbow on something while you're using your pendulum so your arm's not just swinging around. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be showing you here. 
But you would just hold your pendulum over the visual of each chakra and then just ask your pendulum, is this chakra, is my root chakra closed or open? And I'm getting a really nice clockwise spin for this. I did do a really lovely meditation this morning and I always focus on grounding when I do my meditation so I'm not surprised that I'm getting a nice um, a nice open and happy um, sign for my pendulum for that chakra. And you would just repeat that for each of the chakras. Just go up and you can ask, is this chakra open, closed? Now it is possible that you could get no motion out of your pendulum. Again, that's why it's really important to form a relationship with your pendulum so you kind of know um, what that means for your pendulum. So a lot of times for me, if I'm getting no movement, that might mean I don't know, I can't tell you, um, or it could just mean that that, that chakra is it's not under, under or active, it's just totally blocked. Um, so there is a little bit of gray area where it's important, like I said, to have a good relationship with your pendulum and any spirits that you may call on as you work with your pendulum. Um, so if you do get any answers that are a little bit confusing, just, you know, dial it back, spend some time connecting with your pendulum and learning more about how you communicate with it. Um, but that's the breakdown of how you can use your pendulum to really kind of connect with the energy of each chakra. So the nice thing about this, and I've done this, I don't do it anymore because I just trust it and know that it works, but um, if you want to test it, it can be really exciting. So say you get um, on that root chakra, you get that it's no movement or it's swirling counterclockwise, which means it could be underactive or blocked. Um, go take 10 minutes to take a walk outside, take some time to focus on your root chakra, do a little meditation, and then try it again. I bet, I will guarantee you, I will say, I will, I will say this with more assurance, I guarantee you, you will come back and it will tell you that that chakra is opened and a little bit more balanced. That's always been the case with me. It's just amazing how quickly we can, we can manipulate and change our energy when we're really focused on it. So sorry about the noise, y'all. This is like, I am at my shop and, you know, I can't control the people outside. I guess somebody really needed to be noisy with their automobile. Good for them. Um, so that is a breakdown. Um, again, there are three ways that I share on the blog. One of them is a little bit of a repeat from talking about auras, but feel free to hop over to the blog so you can dive into all the resources I share and read more about this. Um, at zendout.com backslash blog. It's the first one up there on the screen so you can dive into it. Um, I've linked the creator of this shirt in the post below again as well. And then of course you can find any of the products that I sell that I've referenced. You can find them in our shop, except for of course the chakra book, which is gonna be coming out next week so soon. Um, so yes, my dear, if you have any questions, Drop them below and I will um, reply to you as soon as I can. Um, so of course, don't hesitate.